It is the 18th of October 2017 and that can mean only one thing. It is time for episode 29 of Boruto, the new Seven Ninja Swordsman. And it's time to team up and roll out. Fuck, that's not from Boruto, wrong one. Uh, so yeah, as you can imagine, I'm pretty darn pleased with this episode as it was quite literally all about the Seven Ninja Swordsman. Maybe not quite as in-depth as I'd have liked, as I've said in previous episodes, but hey, the fact that they have even focused on them a little bit is pretty cool. Or rather, they focused on the new ones, but they made reference to the old ones, and that's actually a point I want to start off on this episode. I've got to say, that intro was damn cool. It was kind of cheesy, but it was a way for each member to introduce themselves and their sword before the titles roll. I know that a lot of it was really stretching of, hey, I'm going to use the explosive power of this sword and things like that. Honestly, it actually felt really cool. It was quite a hype moment and I like when that happens when they're introducing new bad guys. And the bad guys themselves are actually a little more interesting than I gave them credit. So obviously we've got Shizuma, who, you know, has been characterised. And we've got Kagura, so two of the members already are pretty interesting. But I really like the fact that the blonde girl, and I didn't catch her name actually in the episode, the fact that she inherited her dad's uh, double blades as well. I thought that was really cool. And of course, I like that Shizuma also got his dad's blade as well. For a while, I was like, oh man, that's really cool, he got, he got Kisame's sword, and I was like, of course he did, that's that's his son. I I keep forgetting Shizuma is Kisame's son, just because they look kind of different, and I guess I'm used to not thinking that Kisame was really human, although really, looking at Shizuma, it's not like he looks exactly human either. And talking about something with potential for height there, I really like the fact that Chodro's legitimately joining the fight, he's not just showing up as a kind of well, Boruto, I did warn you, kind of thing. He's just diving into it with Boruto and Sarada, and that's really cool. And one of the reasons that's really cool is I'm really looking forward to what happens next week. Because it seems like he's intentionally caught in this trap. He's kind of luring those three in. Because, obviously, you don't become Mizukage just by, you know, being a little bit terrible at combat. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, seeing Kage tier jutsus kind of whooped on their asses for a bit. And I mean, that was the whole purpose for this episode, actually, to kind of hype up the battles that are going to happen, to put a context on them, and to kind of give a nod of, hey guys, prepare for next week, it's going to start amping up. Although, I will say that the Sugetsu subplot resolved itself way earlier than I thought. It does at least serve as a way for Shikada and Inojin to suspect Mitsuki, but I don't know, I was kind of looking forward to seeing Sugetsu take part in a fight or two, but I guess... The whole point is maybe to have him pop up now and again to maybe kind of nudge the audience to be like, eh, what's he got to do with Mitsuki? Who knows? Who is this he they keep talking about? Could it be Orochimaru, his father? Maybe. And honestly, that was about it for the episode. And I say that was about it, and it sounds a bit of a negative thing, but honestly, I really enjoyed it. As I said, it acted as a stopgap between the kind of build-up to the formation of the Seven Ninja Swordsman and the fights that are going to see from next week onwards. I'm going to reckon they've probably got four or five fights ahead of them, or something like that. And as with typical shonen kind of plot things, they've all been separated. So Sarada's got her fight, Boruto's presumably got his fight, although we didn't see much of that until right at the end. And of course, Chojuro's got his fight. Although that one guy with the explosive sword has actually gone off to the sidelines. So there is potential maybe that he'll be fighting Sugetsu or something? That would be pretty cool. And talking about fighting, it's time to discuss next time where it looks like Sarada will be unleashing her Sharingan. That's definitely something I'm pretty looking forward to, because she did get a bit of chance to use it against Shin and stuff, but honestly, this is, I think, her first time to really let rip with it. And of course, we might find out a little bit more about that blonde girl who inherited her dad's dual swords as well. And that about wraps it up for my review of episode 29 of Boruto. As always, thank you very much for sticking around until this part. It's quite a short episode today, but I didn't have all that much to say, really. If you do enjoy this and would like to see me review more episodes in the future, then maybe consider subscribing. And of course, leaving a like or a dislike would be a great way of letting me know if you did enjoy this video. As would a comment, of course, if you've got anything to add or ask me or whatever, or maybe a theory you heard online. 
Also, a little bit of news, I'll be putting out a video in the next few days, but me and another YouTuber are teaming up to do the Charity Extra Life 24 hour gaming marathon thing. The video I put out will explain it more, but basically, as the name suggests, it's a 24 hour marathon where we play nothing but games and don't go to sleep. The don't go to sleep part is actually the more difficult bit. So stay tuned for that, and until next time, Aloha! Which actually means goodbye as well as hello in Hawaiian, so it still counts.